Hey guys, I'm Beevil Guy, and this is a new series for me. I'm going to be showing you how to make some low-tech starter um, spawners for Terra Firma Punk. And I'm going to start with one that I've already made in my Let's Play series, and that is a submarine spawner. I've got my shaders on just so we can actually see through the water a little bit more easily. Um, I just wanted to show you where these spawn sort of things you can find. Um, usually you find them in oceans. I haven't seen so many deep oceans. I don't know if that's a thing, but definitely in these like shallower sections of ocean you can find them. This is actually two submarines stuck together. I just want to show you the sort of things you can find with them. They're pretty good. They usually have three spawners in them quite close together. As uh, so this has got one, two, there's a door in the way there, you can't see it probably because of Optifine I think, two Twilight Wraiths, and another one in the back here. Three very close together, so if you wanted to get fancy with your water streams, or maybe if you were a little bit higher up in the tech ladder, you could actually get easily get three of those um, mobs spawning into the same kind of trap. And this one has another two in it here, but it's been cut off by the way it's spawned together. Um, so with this one you could actually get five, five spawners active at a time. Um, but I'm going to go over to a simpler one. We're going to start simple, so give me just a second. So this is more like the sort of thing you're going to find. And again, it's got three spawners in it, um, but we are trying to keep this simple. All you need to build this, there's some required tools and there's some recommended ones. So you're definitely going to need a copper pickaxe because you're going to need to be able to break away um, these, these stone blocks that are part of the structure of the submarine. You're going to need a copper saw so that you can make things like... Um, you know, your crafting bench, make your ladders to get into this so you can make signs to control the water flows. And you're also going to need a, at least a stone shovel um, just for for dirt to build with. I mean, I suppose you don't technically need this. You could break the, the dirt blocks that are around it by hand, but I would recommend getting it because it's so easy. Uh, and not required, but recommended, I would say get a copper sword. I'm not going to be doing this in survival mode, but you're going to need a way of clearing out the submarine. Um, so having some kind of weaponry is, is pretty helpful. And apart from that, yeah, we need our signs, ladders, and you're going to need some torches to light the place up as well. So step one is to get down into this, and I would definitely make sure you make sure you can get out. <laughs> this is why you need the ladders, because usually these are broken. Light the place up. Uh, start clearing the place out. Obviously break it with your pickaxes or whatever you need to do. Uh, you don't want mobs spawning around you while you're doing on, doing this, trust me. It takes a little bit of time, and I think that's a fair point when you're doing this. This is a little bit fiddly. There's pros and cons to doing this in a s submarine, and they're both centered around the fact that it's underwater. It's a pain in the butt to be building things underwater, um, but it also means that we don't have buckets yet, and we can use the existing water flows from this ocean to help us funnel the mobs to where we want to go. So we've done that. The next thing is decide which spawner you want to work with, and again, you could do three of them. This is a pretty lucky one, actually. We've got two skeleton spawners right next to each other. Uh, so if we wanted to get fancy, we could do that. The last one is uh, these helmet crabs. Definitely not going to use that one. Um, I'm going to keep it simple and do just a one spawner setup just to show you guys how it works. So we're going to get rid of this one as well. Uh, and we're going to be working with this one, so that's the decision made. And the next thing we need to do is clear out some space to work with. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to clear out all these pipes and all this junk, and we're going to start, start clean. The next step is to clear out the space around the spawner, um, the space where the mobs are gonna going to be actually spawning before we collect them and, and get them into like a killing chamber. Um, and this is the, the really fiddly part of all the steps of this process. I think this is going to be the one that takes the longest, especially when you're working with like stone tools and copper tools. But we need to um, get like a nine by nine space centered on this spawner. So four blocks in every direction. And you can see already we've got all of this um, the water flowing through the sides here. You can just put down your, your dirt and replace the water that way. And that's all we're going to be doing until we've got this space cleared out. And you just slowly push outwards. You keep putting dirt down to replace. Put that there. Fill out the space underneath it. Just replacing the water that's around it. But don't go out further than that 9x9 nine nine space. And I'm going to do that now, and then I'll come back and show you how it looks. 
Okay, and when you get to this stage, remember I warned you that it was going to be a pain. <laughs> uh, building anything underwater is a nightmare, and TFC makes it even harder. Um, you should end up, end up with a room that looks something like at least this top rank, rectangle here, and I'll explain the rest of these dimensions as well. Now, each of these walls is nine long, so you're going to actually build a, a cube, which is basically 11 blocks square. So one behind the glass there, as you can see, another nine... And then one in that corner there, so that should be 11, and then 11 across this way, 11, and 11. This wall here, you're probably going to have to make exclusively out of these, um, like your smooth blocks or whatever solid non-gravity block um, you've, you've chosen to use. Most of these other walls you can just build out of out of dirt. I think it's just some quirk of the way it interacts with the water outside the walls. Everything on... The outside walls of this is is water. Everything beyond it is water. You can sort of see out here as well. Uh, seems to keep the dirt in place pretty well. So you can usually use dirt for those. Um, I I wouldn't recommend using glass. I've just done it so you can sort of see what's outside the walls here. But let's talk a little bit about why the dimensions are this size, and maybe you can use that if you need to make any other spawners um, yourself or tweak the settings because every every submarine is going to be slightly different. Um, mobs can spawn four blocks out in every direction from this this spawner. Um, I don't think that's necessarily true. It's weighted in one direction. Uh, I think like the northwest rule applies to these. But for the sake of simplicity, just make it make it uh, a nine by nine interior space, right? So four in every direction, and they can spawn in any of those um, spaces. But they can also spawn either here, here or here in any of those dimensions. So we've got this like three high kind of flat um, like cuboid sort of shape, right? A rectangular prism, I suppose. Um, but each of those blocks is where the mob's foot would spawn, their feet would spawn. Um, but they won't spawn in that space if there's no room for their head. So we're dealing with a two high mob here. Skeletons in this case could be a zombie like I, I found in my single player. Um, so if they, if you've got like your roof here, for example, and the mob tries to spawn here, its head's going to be stuck in that top layer of blocks, and it's not going to do it. So you're losing an entire layer of spawning space if you, if you don't leave a too high gap above the spawner. Um, underneath it, obviously, if the mob spawns with its foot there, you only need the floor to be at this layer and it could still spawn in that space. The problem is we want, we want to push the mobs away from this spawner as quickly as possible. If there's still mobs in the area around this spawner, it won't spawn more. Uh, there is a cap, so it might get a couple of spawns out before it stops working, but we want it to keep going continuously. So we want to push them away from this spawner as quickly as possible. So I'm leaving a too high gap underneath it um, so that the water can flow and push them away and down, and we're going to collect them. I've been playing around with this in my single player. I just push them into the middle and uh, down a tunnel that way. But I found that um, mobs actually get stuck here. When you've got flow water flows flowing from either side, they get jammed up around here. And we, we don't want that. We want to get them further away from this spawner quicker. Um, so I've tweaked the design a little bit, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but yeah, so you've got your two high gap here. One, two, three, four, five blocks long in this direction. And you'll notice I've got this layer of non-gravity blocks here. That's because this water, which is flowing down outside, well, I guess they're all source blocks, but it's outside the, the spawner. We want to let that in, and that's what we're going to use to kind of push the mobs this way. So um, break this top layer of blocks, bottom layer of blocks, rather. And then this is just short enough so that the next layer down, it drops and keeps going this way another four blocks. And then it hits this channel. But we don't actually want this water to be flowing down here. So what you're going to need to do is take your, your signs and put a layer of them like this. Um, if you're watching this video, it's probably worth actually doing this first so you're not fighting with the water currents. But I wanted to show the effect it was having on the, the water flow there. Okay, so now if we jump down this channel, this is where the mobs are going to end, end up getting pushed by these streams here. Uh, we now need to get them pushed this way. So, again, you're using non-gravity blocks here so that when you break out this block and the one behind it, all of this doesn't flow down. But the water, which is outside this corner over here, is now flowing down 
and it's coming underneath these blocks and it's pushing all the mobs in this channel in this direction. Uh, and again, I mean, I think it was one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five blocks this way and then a drop was the limit of where that water could get to. Um, and then you just keep digging underneath. Again, this is why these are non-gravity blocks. This doesn't cave in when you keep the channel going this way and all in this corner is, is these non-gravity blocks. Water channel pushes them this way around the corner and any time the water runs out so like normally the water stream would end here right all you do is you dig down one and you keep going and the water will keep flowing without needing to add new source blocks um, until you get to underneath now where we are now is in the middle of this submarine uh, you're probably gonna have to do some counting to make sure that happens but if you want to copy this exactly, remember this is the, the edge of that room. You go underneath that and directly underneath it you turn right. Go three blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six blocks. And now we're directly underneath the middle of the submarine. So you could actually even drop them down there if you wanted to. It just depends on where you want um, you know, your, your collection point to be. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks gets you to this point here. Um, figure it out, do your calculations, mark it, because um, that's going to be your drop, and you're going to want to dig your collection point from the other side, and I'll show you that in a second, but basically just dig that down. We've got a sign here to stop the water flow, because we don't want it flowing down this tube, we just want the mobs to get pushed here and drop. And This is a 15 block drop, I've calculated that to be about right. If it's any more than that, the mobs die when they fall down. If it's any less than that, um, they have too much health. They get pushed down here uh, to your, and they, they just collect. Now, if I put that down, I've dug this tunnel, uh, this little drop so we can come down, and when the mobs land on this platform, we can just hit them and kill them. But I wouldn't recommend just getting down to that point and digging upwards, because you're going to end up hitting a layer of dirt or gravel, and it's going to come down and it's going to kill you. Um, so the best thing to do is once you figured out where your tunnel is, I marked this with glass so I could see where it was and make sure everything was going okay. It shouldn't affect the spawn rates because it's far enough away from the spawner to not let light in. I uh, just jumped over one, dug down, and then put my ladders going back up again. Now we should be basically good to go. Everything is ready. Um, very carefully remove your torches. It's actually... A lot of people just light up their, their spawner and think that that's going to stop mobs from spawning. That's not what happens. Mobs will spawn still in any of that space that I marked out earlier. As long as one of those... There you go. Squares is dark. Um, so even if you leave this lit up, if you go around the edge of your spawn room, breaking torches... Oh, yeah, disaster. Okay, that's actually fine. Um, you'll find that mobs start spawning even if you've got your spawner lit up. Let's get out of here. Lock that off. Should be able to see that dropping down in a minute when he makes his way around the, the water streams. Yeah, hopefully he hasn't died. Let's jump down here. And there you go, down to 199. Uh, 199, 199. Um, you can always tweak it if, if you find whatever mob you're working with isn't isn't quite getting low enough. Um, one more might even get them to 67, but I think then you lose a few. Uh, yeah, they just beat away on them. A few hits with a stone tool usually does the trick. If you want to make swords and stuff, you can do that too. Uh, in this case, we're going to get a whole load of, like, bones and arrows. Arrows is obviously really useful. Um... Yeah, so that's it. I hope that's been some help for you guys. One last thing I should say is that you've got to be close enough to the spawner for them to keep going. So if you're standing around here, you're close enough, they'll keep spawning. If you're down at the bottom of that drop shaft, they won't. You're too far away. So it's best to just AFK up here for a while, let the mobs build up, and then go down and kill them en masse. Um, if you want it to be a continual thing, you're going to have to use less of a drop. Um, so maybe when they come down this way, drop them down a few blocks and just make your waiting point down there, and then you should still be close enough to where that spawner is. Um, but yeah, that's it.
just wait, enjoy, and I hope you enjoyed that. Any recommendations or feedback or whatever, I'd appreciate this. is my first tutorial video, so if I'm not explaining things clearly, you know, I want to hear that, and I can hopefully improve things for the next one or even remake this one. Just let me know. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks very much. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.